Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at stem cells, differentiated cells, and then we'll finish with a summary. So, as we've emphasised in other videos, some cells need to be specialised to carry out their specific function. However, multicellular organisms don't begin as a multicellular organism. They actually start off as one single cell which becomes a ball of non-specialised cells. So, after fertilisation we have a single cell, which contains our complete set of genetic information, and then this divides and multiplies to form a ball of cells. And all of the cells are what we call non-specialised. So being non-specialised, the cells don't have any specific features or shapes, which we see in specialised cells like erythrocytes. So if you were to look at an erythrocyte, you would see certain features which are adapted for its function. It has a particular shape to deliver oxygen, it has particular size and particular types of substances within it. But if you look at a non-specialised cell, then the cell itself just has generic features of any cell. It just has nucleus, organelles, and a cytoplasm with a cell membrane. It doesn't have any specific shape or adaptation, so it hasn't become specialised for a particular function. And these types of cells which aren't specialised, we call stem cells. So by definition, stem cells are cells that are able to express all of their genes and divide by mitosis. So the stem cells are able to divide and make more stem cells by mitosis, but also all of the genes in our genome, they're able to turn on. So what this is saying is that they have a complete instruction manual for the whole body inside of them, like all of our cells do, but they're able to turn on any gene they choose and become any type of differentiated cell they want to. So they have the potential to become anything, a nerve cell, a muscle cell, skin, liver, stomach, anything. So they're right at the starting point. As the multicellular organism develops, and it becomes more complex, then the cells start to resemble their specialised cells and start to take on their functions. So as we grow into a larger embryo, we're now starting to, to develop our organs and our systems, so all of the cells are becoming specialised, because they need to now start taking on the role and the functions that they're going to be needed for through life. So as stem cells divide, they become more and more specialised, and we can see this as the embryo grows for a multicellular organism. So as we just said, we start off as one cell, which is unspecialized. These divide into many cells. And then eventually, a stem cell will specialize into a specific cell with a specific function. And as they become specialized, they start adopting particular features. So they start to change the number and the types of organelles found within them. So remember, an organelle is a structure found within a cell that carries out a specific function, like a mitochondria, or nuclei, etc, etc. So what we see, for example, with erythrocytes is initially we have this stem cell starting to become a red blood cell. And as it specializes into erythrocyte or red blood cell, we start losing the nucleus and we lose mitochondria. The reason for this is that it makes more room for oxygen to enter the cell. We also might see some shape changes to the stem cells as they become specialized because this is more based towards their function. So for example, red blood cells, they start growing a larger surface area, and they start becoming more flexible due to the fact they need to get through narrow blood vessels like capillaries. When cells become fully specialized, i.e. They're, they're pretty much fully adapted for their function, they're then unable to divide anymore by mitosis. So stem cells are kind of the basic building blocks, the unspecialized cells, which can keep dividing by mitosis to make more. But once a stem cell has become specialised, for example like a nerve cell, it's basically gone through so many chosen changes that it no longer has the ability to make more nerve cells. So this is how it will exist forever until that cell dies or becomes replaced. And this is why it can be quite dangerous because a lot of neurons in the brain, for example, are so specialised that they're no longer able to divide and replace themselves. So if someone has a stroke or damages the brain, it's very hard to replace these cells and it can be life-threatening. So eventually, whichever cell that is, it will become suited to its role in the developed organism. So once the baby grows and is born, it will have multiple different types of tissue with specific functions and they've all become very specialised. For example, epithelial cells, and specifically ciliated epithelia, for wafting mucus through airways and different tubes. Nerve cells, for communication and electrical propagation of action potentials. And muscle cells, for contraction and moving either limbs or the cardiac muscle or muscle found in hollow organs. So cells become very suited to their function, go through changes in their shape, 
and their makeup to carry out these functions. And the process of this specialization is given a term which is cell differentiation. So differentiation is where stem cells become more specialized into different cell types. So for example, if you had a stem cell, it would then specialize into a particular type of cell like a neuron. And the process of this is known as differentiation. Similarly to how when you differentiate between two things, you make it clear which is which, and therefore the differentiation is making it clear which type of cell this cell needs to become. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.